Sup, man? I'm Leon, the Paperback Maniac. Hope you're doing fine. Happy Valentine's Day if you're watching this on the day the video drops. It is V-Day 2020. Uh, it's also President's Day weekend, which means it's a four-day weekend for my ass, uh, which makes me very, very happy. Uh, I gotta enjoy this short little break while it lasts because, uh, as any teacher will tell you, March is a long fucking haul. Uh, it's a long stretch till spring break. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, having a good old time here. I uh, thought I'd take the opportunity to do a little collection update. Uh, I think it's about that time. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. I uh, got some, uh, gems to show you guys as, as usual. Um, before I do that, I also want to uh, give a little shout out actually to a brand new podcast that has dropped. Uh, for any of you viewers who are also podcast listeners, uh, I am an avid podcast listener. Uh, you know, I do a lot of driving in my car, uh, living where I do. Uh, about like, I got like an hour commute uh, back and forth to work each day. So, um, new podcast came out. Uh, I think they only have like two episodes called Audiobooks from Hell. And it is a podcast hosted by a really cool dude named Sean DeRegger. Uh, I am a huge fan of his other podcast, The Screamcast, which is kind of like a horror movie podcast. Uh, so much so, actually, that I even have a Screamcast mug. Uh, you can see it right there uh, and cue the sip here. Yeah, but um, he apparently has been doing uh, like a lot of audiobook narrations, like like genre titles, and a lot of uh, sort of vintage horror paperbacks. And um, so he created this uh, new podcast where he, you know, discusses horror fiction, um, a lot of it being vintage uh, horror, obviously, hence the title. And uh, it's really entertaining. I'm really enjoying it. I think he's just a really cool, you know, chill, laid back guy. I really like his sort of, uh, you know, like self-deprecating sense of humor. And um, yeah, so I encourage you guys to, to check it out. You know, it's it's always uh, fun to discover podcasts that discuss, you know, horror fiction, albeit, you know, in this case, an audio format, but still, uh, you know, he's mentioned he's got some um, like interviews lined up with horror authors of the time, including William Scholl, who I know is, you know, a big one. But uh, yeah, you know, check it out. Give him a sub. Um, I, I'm enjoying it. So, okay, without further ado, let's get to the haul. Um, we're going to start from across the pond here. Uh, the first book we're looking at is Wolf by Steve Harris. Just look at that, that gorgeous artwork, uh, by, uh, Steve Crisp, I believe. And, uh, this book <clears throat> was published by Headline, uh, in 1991. I believe, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think this is his second novel. Uh, I do plan on reading his first novel, Adventureland, uh, very, very soon. Although I might wait till the summer because I feel it, it, it seems like a summer book. It's like kind of like carnival or like fair horror. Um, but, uh, this, this one looks awesome too. This dude wrote like thick bricks, but, um, yeah, they seem like, you know, like fantastical and, and the supernatural and, and then all the kind of stuff that I like. So definitely looking forward, uh, to checking out Steve Harris. I got another one of his books actually. Uh, the second one is Straker's Island. And this one, uh, I was surprised, came out later. The, uh, this paperback edition was from Vista Press, which is another uh, UK publisher, I imagine. Um, the paperback version came out in 99. Looks like it was first published in the UK in 98. And um, yeah, that's pretty impressive artwork, right? I mean, they were still doing hand-painted covers in the late 90s. Uh, that's more <laughs> than you can say for, I think, a lot of the US publishers. But um, yeah, this one looks uh, really intriguing too. I'm just, I'm, I'm really stoked. I feel like Steve Harris is gonna like be one of these like gems I discover in 2020 that I really like. Uh, another dude who I have a really good feeling about uh, is Mark Morris. I have a couple of this guy's books. Uh, this one is The Secret of Anatomy. And uh, this is another guy that public that writes just these massive tomes, but um, you know that's cool. He's just something to get lost in. I mean, if it's good, right? It's it, that's that's awesome. Um, this was published by Harper Collins in 1995. This is another British writer, I believe. Um, I have <clears throat> his first couple of books. One of them is a Della Abyss book called Stitch, um, and then his first book, The Horror Club. I've heard nothing but good things about. I hear it's it's kind of like 
similar sort of to it, but but just awesome. And it, it just looks really cool. And that's another book I hope to get to in 2020. But this one looks cool too. Uh, you see a blurb there from Clive Barker. I, I hear that this guy's been compared to Clive Barker because he sort of delves in uh, a lot of like fantasy based horror, which is, you know, just my jam. So yeah, super stoked on this guy. Uh, and then yet another writer from across the pond here uh, is uh, Joe Donnelly, and this is Shrike. Uh, this book was published by Arrow in 1995. Looks like it first came out in 1994. Another book that I've heard really good things about, um, and I was completely unfamiliar with this guy until like just like a few weeks ago. And so I thought I'd uh, start with this one. Uh, sounds really cool. Looks awesome. More kind of uh, fantasy based horror and um yeah another one to just kind of just get lost in and uh, I'm, I'm super stoked uh to check it out love finding that those cool like early to mid 90s uh, horror novels <laughs> there are a few here uh, today including the next one uh yeah i am super uh stoked on this book i actually have at owned this before this is um dry skull dreams by michael green uh, it's got some amazing jim warren cover art there i mean the stuff he was doing for pocket in the 90s is second to none and um this one uh was published by pocket in 95 and uh, I'll give you guys the the, the 411, uh, the inside scoop. Actually, currently, I am reading this author's first novel, The Jim Jams. And uh, uh, yeah, look out for a review for that one probably next weekend. Um, yeah, I'm fucking loving it so far. It's just like the most amazing 90s creature horror. Uh, yeah, and so and that, and that one has an amazing cover too. Uh, this also by Jim Warren. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to, to, to... I'm enjoying that one so much that I really can't wait... To, uh, to read this one, his follow-up. And sadly, I think it ends there. I don't think he, um, I don't think he, like, at least under his own name, published uh, any other horror. Uh, let me know if I'm mistaken. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really digging the Jim Jams so far. It's so much fun. Um, okay, another pocket title here. This one's going back a bit. Uh, we've got Office Party by Michael Gilbert. And this uh, was published by Pocket in 1981, as you can kind of see there from the cover. Uh, that's pretty gnarly, right? It looks interesting. Um, yeah, this is one. This is a Pocket title that I was um, uh, hitherto unfamiliar with, actually. Um, yeah, it looks pretty insane. I don't even know anything about this. It says, uh, it was a late Friday and nobody at Felton Products knew they were about to put in some overtime. Nobody but Eugene. Not pretty Sally, whose sexual teasing was as casual as the crossing and uncrossing of her long, tawny legs. Uh, not Larry, his boss, whose patronizing arrogance was about to earn him a very special humiliation. Not Joan, the prim and proper secretary, whose hidden longings would provide the weekend's most lively entertainment. Soon all their fears, their fantasies, their secrets will be revealed when quiet little Eugene, who has never taken an aggressive action in his life, bolts the door, takes out a forty-five caliber pistol and three sets of manacles, and turns to his co-workers and begins his own terrifying office party. <laughs> so another, uh, another tale of a meek man getting his revenge. Uh, so much of those in the early 80s. Uh, yeah, gotta love that. <laughs> Sounds great. Okay, uh, next up, we've got a book called From a Whisper to a Scream. Uh, that is also the title of a great 80s horror anthology. Uh, this it was written by um, Samuel M. Key, which was a pen name for the author Charles DeLint. Uh, in my last haul, I showed some Charles DeLint books and uh, couldn't get enough, so I thought I'd uh, hop on to one more. Uh, this is from... Um, let's see, 1992, uh, published in October of 92, uh, from Berkeley and, um, yeah, looks really cool. And actually, uh, the next book I'm going to show you is also by Charles Dillant, not a horror novel, uh, but, uh, this is Green Mantle and got to give a shout out to my viewer, uh, Mystic Mac, who mentioned this book, I think in the comments of my last haul. Uh, and said that he liked it, and uh, yeah, it looks awesome. Obviously, this is like some high, fa like some fantasy. Although I, I think it's, um, I think it's one of those like genre blenders. It's like fantasy mixed with um, 
some like something else like uh crime or i don't know but uh yeah this this looks this looks awesome so you know every now and then you got to have a palate cleanser um and i do like fantasy actually and you know like i like i love horror fantasy and i love a regular fantasy so um you know uh mystic mac uh gave his recommendation when i saw the cover i was like yes uh that's for me so i decided i'd check it out so here's charles delint uh writing under his own name uh, Green Mantle, uh, published by Ace Fantasy in 1988. So, yeah, and there's the back. Pretty cool. Okay, uh, then a couple of Zebra books. Could not help uh, when I saw these uh, in the shop. Here we have Nightstone by Rick Hodala, surprisingly one I've never owned before. Got the really cool holographic cover. I don't know if the light is doing this justice, but obviously it it uh, changes from uh, a skeleton, of course, you know, this was that era of Zebra, into a boy, uh, but the boy is, um, I don't think I'm catching that, but the boy is like 3D. Like you see that, I mean, that's freaking awesome. God, these guys were just pumping money into these covers. Um, I actually have heard good things about Rick Hodel. Um, I have, I have his first book, I think, which you've also published with Zebra called Moon Death or it's like a vamp or it's a werewolf story, I think. Um, but, um, I might start with that one or I don't know. I might start with this one. This is a pretty fat one. I don't know. These Zebra books, that's kind of thick for Zebra. Uh, if anyone's read this and can, it can say whether it's worth, you know, the time investment, let me know. But, um, I mean, that cover is worth picking up, right? Just freaking awesome all right um another zebra title uh here we have the burying point by ann brahms and um this one was published in april of 1991 uh which may account for the fact that it's not uh labeled as a horror novel <laughs> it's actually labeled as Romantic suspense. I don't think I've ever seen. I don't think I've ever seen that that uh, label on the spine of a book before. But um, when you think about it, ninety one. Okay, so you know the Silence of the Lambs had effectively buried horror. Uh, you know, horror was pretty much dead, and this was the time of all those sort of like yuppie. Uh, romantic thrillers like you know there's movie, movies like um i remember there was like a julia roberts one called sleeping with the enemy uh you know fatal attraction had come out earlier of course um and so maybe they're trying to like you know market it that way as a romantic thriller or romantic suspense novel but um yeah pretty cool cover and i do love that era of early 90s so had to check it out uh, okay, then a couple of leisure books. Uh, first off, one that I do already own, but I couldn't help myself. Uh, Premonition by J.N. Williamson. Uh, this book was published by Leisure in 1981. It, I, I mean, there's multiple editions of this book. I have another edition of this. Um, I'm I, It says 81. It doesn't say anything, any date in here. On Goodreads, it says 81. I don't know. I have a hard time believing. This looks a little later in the 80s, but I couldn't find any 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 other date but um that is a frig this is the best edition of the book in my opinion that is an amazing cover uh J jerry williamson uh you know i don't know people he may have his fan he must have his fans out there um i i'm i haven't read any of his full length uh novels but um you know the, the covers are some of the very very best of the vintage horror era so you know you got to get them and you got to you got to add them to the collection when you can so Okay, uh, another leisure title, I think, yes. Uh, this is The Burning. Here's one that was uh, totally unfamiliar to me. Um, this was uh, written by Jeff Fain, and uh, this apparently is the reprint from Leisure. They put this one out, this edition, in 1984. There is another earlier edition with a different cover uh, that Leisure published in 1981. And um, I, I don't know, I, I kind of like the, the other cover. It's, it's stupid. This one's pretty basic. But um, yeah, this is one that I, I had never heard of. And then I just kind of saw it on a, on a shop shelf and decided, okay, for two bucks, definitely worth adding. You know, that's the, that's the great era of leisure. So, and that was kind of before, uh, it's one of the rare like slim leisure titles that aren't like overstuffed and bloated like, like a lot of them. Um, okay, then a couple of tour titles here. Um, next up, there is uh, Mantis by K.W. Jeter. 
Uh, this is a, just a great cover that I've always loved. Um, and K.W. Jeter is a really, uh, really, really good good writer. Um, I read uh, a horror novel of his called Soul Eater a couple years back and dug it. And um, I've got like a couple others of his. Dark Seeker is one that looks really cool. Um, and this one looks amazing, although I've heard, I don't remember where, that, but that this cover art is pretty misleading. I don't think it's, um, it's not like an animal attack book or anything, as the title would imply. But um, yeah, this one was published by Tor in, uh, let's see, 19, or 1987. So yeah, great, great year for Tor and, and uh, all these guys. So Another one, uh, this one was totally new to me until I saw it in the shop. Uh, this is The Shelter. Uh, this was written by Mary Kittredge and Kevin O'Donnell Jr., and Tor put this one out in August of 1987. And uh, yeah, I this is one that was just new to me. I just had never heard of this before. So I um, thought I would check it out. It's cool. I always like to add those Tor titles. And then one more Tor title here. Uh, this is another one, actually, that I had never heard of. This is Adversaries uh, by Daniel Rhodes. And uh, this one was published in uh, December of 1989 by Tor. And that's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, just a couple here, more here. Uh, next up, we've got Shapes. Uh, this is a book that I have owned before, but when I saw it in, you know, really good, like a pristine spine, I was like, okay, I'll get this. Um, this is written by Richard Delap and Walt Lee. Uh, it was published by Charter in, um, let's see. February of 1987. And actually, if you look on the inside, uh, this is a romance of horror. So this is, you know, this is the, like, it must have been their Valentine's Day release. Uh, so pretty topical for now, right? Uh, and this was, um, this was, yeah. So uh, February of 1987, a romance of horror. Uh, yeah, it, it, it sounds pretty, it, it looks pretty cool. And um, yeah, so I kind of thought I would, I would pick that one up as well. And then, okay, the penulti penultimate one, uh, this may seem a little out of place here, but uh, I'm just full of surprises. Um, next up, we have E.T., The Book of the Green Planet. And uh, this is an illustrated novel for young readers, young adults, a YA book from back in the day. Uh, and this was written by William Kotzwinkel. He is the person who wrote the official E.T. novelization, I believe, uh, and it's based on a story by Steven Spielberg. And apparently uh, this book is kind of based off of a, um, like an undeveloped sequel idea for E.T. That, that Spielberg came up with. But not the famous unproduced uh, treatment that Spielberg wrote, which was called E.T. 2 Nocturnal Fears. <laughs> and if you don't know the story behind that, that is a, that, that is a bad shit. Uh, like this treatment that he wrote, um, like right after E.T. came out and was a smash success, of course, the movie studio was like, yeah, you, we need to start developing a sequel to this. And so he, <laughs> he turned in the sequel that is just so ridiculous. Uh, it's so, uh, if, if you want to hear what that is all about, uh, there's another great podcast called The Best Movies Never Made. And their first episode ever was on uh, E.T. 2 Nocturnal Fears. Um, and they kind of go over like what that was, but it, it, I have a hard time believing Spielberg was serious about that. Um, that one, uh, he might've just been doing it so that they like, wouldn't want to move forward. But I, apparently he, this is also, you know, another, I, an idea from him. And apparently, uh, the old universal studios ride, uh, that, you know, no longer exists, unfortunately is based off of this, this book. And I, I remember going on that ride in the summer of 91, the one time I ever went to Disney World, I was my dad took my brother and me, and uh, I remember loving it. You like go on the bike and everything, and it's just like, yeah, you, you, you like, it, it was just such a cool ride. I mean, obviously, I have kind of vague memories of it. I was pretty young, but um, uh, yeah, so apparently that ride is, is based off of uh, this book as well. So um, yeah, I just figured, you know, for like a kitsch kind of novelty sake, I'd pick this one up since... Cool. I'm a big E.T. fan. I love, I love E.T. All right. And then the last one, uh, this I'm actually really excited about. This is, um, this is the man from hell. 
and it is a compendium, or I guess a collection, of uh, short stories uh, by Arthur Lee Zagat. And um, this is the first time that this author, who was a, he was a class, he was writing during like the classic pulp era, like these the stories, which are collected for the very first time in a book before they were only available in like pulps, you know, from like the 30s, like 36, 37, 37. So like the mid 30s through the late 30s, it looks like for these. And these are just like your kind of classic sort of, you know, EC style uh, pulp horror tales and um yeah really 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 fun and i'm 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 excited to start actually reading this i'm gonna i think i'm gonna start this and just kind of read it alongside you know the novels because it's some it's nice sometimes i'll do that with short fiction i'll just like kind of have one going like an anthology um or a collection of stories like while i'm reading a novel and uh yeah this sort of classic pulp horror from that halcyon you know 30s era of pulps uh, seems really cool. This one was published by Black Dog Books in 2010. So an indie indie publisher. You know, props to them for putting out a book. Uh, you know, that uh, for a person who had never had a book um, or his stories collected in a book before. So uh, yeah, I am uh, excited for that as well. So that's it, guys. Uh, that is the haul. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you are familiar with any of those titles, of course, always feel free to uh, drop a comment below. Uh, I also want to say uh, stay tuned this weekend for a special little treat. I'm actually going to be doing another video, uh, maybe even tomorrow. Uh, so um, it's something a little different from what I usually do, but not really, <laughs> not really at all. So uh, yeah, definitely check back for that. Uh, stay tuned or, you know, better yet, just subscribe and, and hit the what, what is it? The little, um, the bell, uh, the, the notification icon. And that, then you're not going to, you know, you're, you're not going to risk uh, missing anything. So uh, yeah, definitely do that. But I think the other video uh, that I post this weekend will also be uh, will also be fun. So, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Till next time, take it easy. Peace.